Alrighty. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. I am back with uh, my winner bracket semifinal match against Adidia. So, um, I banned his... What did I ban? I banned his Dude Paladin. He banned my Zulok, which I think comes out to be pretty good for me because Zulok's uh, I mean, it's a solid deck. It can win games. But... Definitely, um, there are other decks I have that I feel like I would rather, well, not have banned. And so I'm pretty happy about this outcome. Um, just waiting on him to quickly wrap up whatever he's doing. He said BRB two minutes, so yeah, and then we'll have a match. So having banned his Dude Paladin, he still has a uh, Tempo Mage, Spiteful Priest, and... I'm um, Katharina Secret Hunter, all of which I feel like are f reasonably favorable matchups for my list as long as I play well. So hopefully I uh, hopefully I do play well, which is not always a given, and I don't get high rolled, which is also not always a given. Getting some high rolls myself would be nice too. My decks are definitely built to high roll, but you never know. Anything can happen in Hearthstone. So my lists, for those of you who don't have it up, are uh, my remaining lists are Murloc Paladin, Aggro Token Druid, and um, Aggro-ish Midrange Hunter. And yeah, I have a bunch of Hungry Crabs that aren't going to be relevant in these matchups. I think I might have over against Murloc Paladin, but uh, turns out there really aren't that many in the field, so I feel a little bad about that. But otherwise, I mean, strong aggro decks can win against everything, so I'm feeling confident. Um, I think against Secret Mage, Spiteful Priest, and this Hunter, I'm most confident in my uh, Murloc Paladin to hopefully sweep this. I think all my decks have reasonable matchups against all of his. Um, Oh, the reason why he banned my zoo might be because I have Dragon Slayers in there to tech against Priest, but even so. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with uh, Murloc Paladin, just because, well, it is the strongest of the decks. Hopefully things go well for me. Winner of this goes on to face Logan Gore in the winner bracket finals. Loser of this is awaiting the result of some other match. Versus okay, so I sort of expected he led with mage yesterday and he's leading with mage again today. Um, Divine Favor is a pretty dead card in this matchup. Consecration is reasonably dead here, although it can bait counterspell. I do have the coin to also bait counterspell, which is very important for a call to arms turn. But I think I'm going to mulligan them just for a strong curve play. Uh, what I'm looking for is... Oh, not all one drops. I was hopefully trying to get a rock pool hunter to combo the Inquisitor, but we'll see how this goes. No one drop for him is good for me because this means I can establish Tidecaller and Inquisitor. I have to use the coin here, but I think it's worth it um, to get the early board pressure. Amazing. He doesn't have the um, turn one mana worm, which is always good for me. Feels a little bad using the coin this early, but I mean, I don't have. Uh, don't have what's that called? Uh, I don't have called arms in hand. So someday I'll be just like you is always a little scary. Um, main things it lets him do. I don't know. Discount of spells scare me. Like there's definitely a. I'm almost definitely dropping two righteous protectors. I'm just debating whether or not I want to clear out. Uh, clear out the apprentice. The apprentice is really dangerous. But on the other hand, if I can keep the Tide Caller alive, what spells am I worried about? He has Primordial Glyph, which is super strong with this. Some secrets, which are whatever. And. I'll play it safe and remove it. Feels bad doing so, especially with War Leader as a follow up. But I really don't want to get blown out by some crazy spell combo. But this is what I was afraid of. He would just play Curve Out, Curve Tour, Mage, and a spell, and I now just feel like a dum dum. But what can you do? Um, Hydrologist is pretty good here because it baits both uh, explosive runes and counterspell later on. So, I'm gonna go for that. See, Repentance is not super relevant here. Like, it stopped Crystal Runner, but not a big deal. Eye for an Eye is too early in the matchup, so Noble Sack's the pick. 
and it is explosive ruins. That's sort of expected. Um, fine with this. There's a thought about committing Noble Sack now versus keeping it for the um, later secret. I think I do want to keep it for the secret just because it's somewhat likely he'll play Counterspell coming into this turn, even though Noble Sack helps deal with the board quite well. So if I don't play the Noble Sack, I think I want to trade. If I do play the Noble Sack, I go face. I think I do it. I, I, I am definitely the aggressor in this matchup, and I do have Consecration to eat a Counterspell if I need to. Discovery, sure, not a huge deal here. And yeah, he's just gonna try to take out one of the uh, one of the guys. Noble Sack comes in really big here, and there's no secret. Rockpool Hunter. <clears throat> sort of interesting what I want to play here. I could go Rockpool Hunter and a guy. Not a great play. Um, this mage deck doesn't have that many minions. I think I don't feel that bad about committing Consecration right now, even though I'd rather have it to uh, eat up a counter spell later on. And he did just draw a spell, but Rockpool next turn can... That is sort of... That's, that's non-trivial. So yeah, Joshua is saying... War leader, which lets me take some pretty favorable trades. Not a bad option. Gets it in early before the before the runes. Yeah, fine. <laughs> and now I feel like I'm accepting external help. Oops. Well, but he is right. The war leader is definitely one of the good plays. He's an, he's an experienced uh, Murloc Paladin player in his own right. So that could potentially be Counterspell. I don't really care that much. But Rock Bull Hunter is sort of an obvious play here. It is another Explosive Runes, fine by me. <coughs> I'm in a pretty good spot on the board. Especially if he needs to commit pings to clearing out the Silverhand Murlocs. Although Call to Arms would be really nice coming up. Oh, he does in fact have to commit a ping. Is that going to be Crystal Runner? No, it's just a secret. Secret's fine by me. He's already... I'm late. I'm late. Crystal Runner is less fine. He's already committed... Uh... Both Explosive Ruins. So he has an Ice Block and a Counterspell remaining. Testing for Counterspell this early doesn't feel great. I think I'd rather just make two Murlocs here. And then continue pressuring. Repent! Repent! So the main worry here is like Primordial Glyph into an AoE, that would be really nasty. Like even now he could like Glyph into Volcanic Potion would be really strong. Fireballing, um, War Leader sort of sucks for me, but it's something I can live through. Code Light Seer is really good here. Let's continue to build uh, what's a very aggressive board. Especially if I get another War Leader or a uh, Unidentified Maul or like... Uh, gentle Mega Sword to follow up on this, or Tarim. We'll see how it goes. Um, I am sort of a little lacking in damage, but let's see. If he clears out two guys, which he's going to, we're going to have four, six, probably just six damage. It's not going to be enough to pop a block without additional help. So hopefully I can get a weapon in or something. Crossbow here is fine. I have to double Consecrate, one to eat up the... So Leroy lets me pop a block if it's block and just straight up wins if it isn't. So I'm pretty sure Leroy's the way to go here. Time's up. Let's do this. And is it block? It is block. Okay. So assuming he can't kill me, which um, 7, 9 puts me on 14. He shouldn't be able to kill me. Double Consecration next turn should end this. One to get through the counter spell, one to get through him. Unless he discovers something crazy. That was a really good Leroy top deck. Sort of why I have Leroy in this deck. Helps me win a lot of games where I'm, I'm uh, 
I'm running out of pressure. Although it is sort of a dead card in some matchups. And looks like I don't even need the consecrations to get through. Well played. That's game one. Feels good, man. So remaining, he has a spiteful priest and the secret hunter. I'm guessing spiteful priest is I don't know. Paladin should be favored against spiteful priest. I have no idea what the matchups about the secret hunter. But he doesn't run explosive traps, so I assume that I'm fast enough that if I don't get high road by Barnes, I can take that too. It's matchups like this Hunter though, where I sort of wish I still had Spellbreakers in this deck. Because I cut Spellbreakers to be able to have better matchups against um, non-Warlock things, given that I was planning on banning every Warlock or every uh, Control Lock I encountered. I brought the Consecrations to help out in aggro matchups. They've been sort of dead, because I um, haven't been playing the aggro decks I thought I would, but we'll see. Okay, so Spiteful Priest is an interesting matchup. Obviously, if this gets into late game, I'm in a bad spot. But I can just tempo out. And so the main things, it, the main thing that deck has is it doesn't have a come from behind mechanism other than two Duskbreakers. So Call to Arms is a really good answer here if he coins out Duskbreaker turn three. Oh, Rockpool Hunter is amazing here. This is the best start. That's pretty much, I think, the best opening hand I could ask for here. Leroy's a little dead, but it could be relevant later on. Um, Tide Caller into Rockpool Hunter is one of the strongest, uh, Hello, one of the strongest Chandra. openers possible. It gives me a turn 2, 3, 3, which lets me fight through everything. And Unidentified Mold, Divine Shield is pretty good here. I'm definitely happy with that. Um, I might commit in turn 3. Hopefully I draw like a War Leader instead, so I don't have to. Otherwise, it's also a really good follow-up to Call to Arms. Either way, it does let me um, make his Duskbreaker turn a little less strong. We'll see what I draw. Another Tide Caller. Um... I think I do want to play the Tide Caller here. It's really good Duskbreaker bait. Even though I don't know, Purifier's Maw is so good here. Nah, I'm gonna Tide Call. Um, see if I can bait the Duskbreaker. <sighs> Maybe I should have Purifier Maw. Um, the Tide keeping the Tide Caller alive here is such a big deal. Yeah, I think I should have Mawed. I think that was a misplay. Cause even after Call to Arms, these things still stay alive. It's gonna coin Duskbreaker here, and I'm gonna feel silly. <coughs> Yeah, I think I definitely misplayed there. Metal some insects comes out. Understood. I'm gonna pretend I topped that call to arms because it's more tilt that way. Getting both call to arms here is a really big deal. Next turn I can like hero power purifiers, then another call to arms after that. And this way if he does have a second dust breaker, I can also um, power through it. Looks like that is a second dust breaker. Um eh, that's a little unfortunate. Code Light Seer here is not the play, I don't think. Yeah, I think Hero Power Purifier Mall is fine. It's gonna let me keep powering. I, I, I definitely misplayed the early game. Um, if I lose, this is totally on me. Code Light Seer is really good in this matchup because it can help me get things out of range. Um, Draconet Operative is fine. It's a body that's sort of annoying, but at this point I'm sort of committed on board to just, well, going face. So the main hope here is that he doesn't pull on my Consecrations. That would be really unfortunate. Uh, I, I didn't think when I was teching the Consecrations about steal your, steal your stuff cards like Draconet Operative, so that could actually be really bad for me. Please don't be Consecration. Oh my god, it's Consecration. Oh, that's... That's... That feels bad. So this is starting to become fairly bad. Um, Consecration on my own here, is that relevant? Could be relevant. Either way, I do want to kill the 2-2. Two -two. It's just whether or not I want to clear the rest. What's my other option? It's like, reinforce uh, Code Light Seer? It's also not great. Cut lights here, consecration. None, none of my plays are particularly palatable here. Um, I think I just want to start pressuring as much as possible to face. So I think cut lights here, consecration is the play here. What's going on? Right Rallying Blade and Leroy represents a good amount of damage out of hand, but I don't- I'm not sure I can race this quickly enough. 
both calls to arms are down. Um, Divine Favor will be a really good draw here. It'll let me have the longevity to fight late game. Terran would also be great. But right now, this is feeling sort of bad. Glimmer Root, he's just looking at my deck list to see exactly what card it is. Hopefully it's one of the crappy Murlocs and not like Righteous Protector. I think the best option for him to get off Glimmer Root for me is Divine Favor, which is totally dead and just makes my Divine Favor better. If that's the case, it's actually um, better for him to not pick the correct card. And Divine Favor here is a great pickup. Just to verify, 9, 11 damage, I don't have lethal yet. So it's better for me to go with Rallying Blade, Divine Favor. It's a brutal top deck. I see you draw pretty much most of my remaining deck. Um, Righteous Protector is a great pickup here. Means that I can... Chum Protector. And now I'm debating whether or not I want to clear... Like how many of his minions I want to clear of any. Um, I think I leave the glim... Yeah, I take out the operative and... Uh, go face with the others. Even if he has Dustbreaker, the Glimmer Root's like not a huge deal. I'd rather not um, waste face damage here. The next turn, I can pull out like War Leader Megasaur, which is super strong. Free from Amber. Hopefully, it's not a taunt. Um, please don't be. Please don't be the forwarder. For for my Grand Archivist is probably fine. Gets mind control. Don't be the taunt. That'd be nice. It is the taunt. Okay, now I have to calculate damage again. Um, I have 3, 6, 12. I'm pretty sure that's lethal. Yeah, that's definitely lethal. Um, 1 into 1 more. Our leader comes out. And Leroy. So yeah, luckily even though I misplayed the early game a little bit in my opinion, that Divine Favor top deck really brought it back for me. Um, and so whatever he picked here, if it wasn't a card that's super strong, and it wasn't like Consecration, clearly, it probably wasn't Tarim, I think he would have been better off not picking that card at all just to weaken my Divine Favor a little. But um, I'll have to ask him after the game um, what he picked up from the Glimmer Root there. So yeah, finally, it's the Barn Secret Hunter. Um, this is a deck I played on ladder a bit for to actually quite a bit of success. So hopefully, um, hopefully I don't get rolled by it. I think I do have favorable matchups, but it's a deck that can definitely beat anything. Um, this is a good opening. I think I keep Grimscale and both Murlocs. Um, the only one drop he has is Secret Keeper. Which Grimscale does fail to uh, combat a little bit, but everything else I do need a one drop. Uh, Rockpool is a great pickup here as usual. So I'm looking to knock a Secret Keeper here, that would be really nice. And he doesn't have it. So he's going to be displeased that I have a one drop for the 8th consecutive game, or whatever it is. But in my defense I do run 8 one drops in this deck, and all of them are viable turn 1 plays. So that, that does make it slightly better. Uh, tracking, which is good for me because it's not a turn 2 secret. Which means I can curve out to Rockpool Hunter or um, War Leader, and this could be um, utterly devastating when all of this comes together. Because now, if he plays a secret, I can War Leader and use the Rockpool. Rockpool kills pretty much every 2 drop. Okay, Kill Contrast plus secrets is. A little more frustrating, but that's fine. Um, he doesn't run Snipe, which means I can play the War Leader without any hesitation. And so the question is just what I want to test for first, whether it's Freezing Trap or uh, Snake Trap. I definitely want to clear this guy, so I think I'll do this. If it's Freezing Trap, it's Freezing Trap. Um, Rockpool is a decent guy to get bounced, and then I will kill the Huntress. Next, I mean, I just have so many Murlocs coming out, so the main thing I'm afraid of is Barnes, yes. Hopefully it picks Secret Keeper. Secret Keeper! Violet Worm is unfortunate, but you know, we can deal with it. Uh, Consecration will clean up the chaff. Hopefully he doesn't have like a Spellbreaker to be able to um, buff it up. I'm gonna go for... The Inquisitor. A Taunt. 
and coin um, code lights here and just do I want to push face damage? Am I scared about the protector game broken? Um, I think I am a little bit. Yeah, I think I will take out the barns. I think there's a legitimate, um, it's definitely a legitimate cause to go face here. But given that I can essentially keep dominance of the board, I may as well play it safe. We'll see if he has the Spellstone. Spellstone is probably his best option here. Secret Keeper is not a huge deal. Yeah. So that's fine by me. Um, gonna very happily consecration here and not look back. Uh, again, test for freezing trap. This is the best option to do so. It is freeze trap. Take out the secret keeper with the tanky minion and keep pushing face. It's looking pretty good for me. I have, I have a really good hand. The protector is actually a pretty good target for freezing trap because, well, <clears throat> I don't care that I got frozen. So divine shield taunt. Divine favor is a dead card here. I'm gonna taunt up. He doesn't run unleash the hound, so I have no uh, no qualms about flooding the board here. Uh, getaway Kodo for yet more taunt means that I can happily go face and not feel bad at all. And yeah, I think that's about it. That Stalker Rexar is strong, but doesn't actually clear my board. And that Stalker Rexar will put him on 11 health, which is still lethal. Um, he would need like Rex. I'm not sure what saves him, honestly. Maybe a really good Wandering Monster that pulls like a massive taunt, the uh, Drakari whatever, the 2-8. Um, that might do it. Otherwise, I really, I'm really not seeing um, what can save him here, if anything. And it looks like he's just gonna kill Command in his own well face. Played. Commit Honorable Sudoku. And that's a 3-0 in my favor. Um, GG's. And best of luck in the lower bracket. So I'm going to be facing off against Logan Gore in the winner bracket uh, finals. And he's going to be against... He's going to be awaiting quite a few results in the lower bracket. Alright. Um, doesn't look like any other matches are going on right now. And so I'm just going to cut the stream here. Thank you for watching. And um, yeah, I'm glad I won. <laughs>